Hi everyone, welcome to Unacademy Neat English. I'm your biology educator Ambika Sharma and in today's video we are going to revise organism and population chapter from your ecology unit in less than 30 minutes. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. So students, we are going to start organism and population today. So in this video, I'll be covering all the important topics. I'll tell you the kind of MCQs that can come in your paper. Right students? So listen to me very carefully. The very first thing is ecology. What is this ecology? See, ecology means the study. Basically, we will study that how different organisms, they are interacting plus First of all, how organisms are interacting with their environment, with their surrounding, of course, the physical factors, the abiotic factors. And moreover, we will also consider that how organisms are interacting with each other. How are they interacting among themselves? This is what we study under the ecology. So when you talk about the ecological hierarchy, we started with the organism. Like uh, we say the cell is the basic unit of life. Cells together, they will form tissue. Tissues together, they will form organs. Same way, when you are talking about the ecological hierarchy, so first of all, you talk about what? You talk about the organism, right? You talk about the organism. So organisms of same species, Please focus on this keyword because in this, in your uh, new syllabus, right, only population part is there. So definitely you will get question from this part. So kindly listen to me very carefully. So when you talk about the population, population means group of individuals, but it is not just group of individuals, group of individuals of same species, right? Group of individuals of, yes, group of individuals of same species living in a particular area right living in a particular area at a particular time so the keyword here is that individual of same species they make the population of that area so now next to it is the communities where we consider different different populations. so of course we are not uh, the only one that are living right if humans are there dogs are also there squirrels are also there snakes are also there insects are also there so that different different population even the plants even the microorganisms even the animals they are making the communities and how they all interact with each other these community and their interaction with their surrounding that will come under ecosystem then ecosystem together will form biome and then the largest one will is the biosphere clear bache? so now when you're talking about the population we discuss the population attributes also known as population characteristics so the, you should know about it so here you talk about the birth rate and the death rate what is their birth rate and the death rate so as per NCRT it is the birth it is referred to the per capita birth rate refers to the per capita birth and death rate refers to the per capita death basically it means you will talk about the birth rate to the total number of individual when you are saying per capita birth means total birth rate uh, birth rate to the total number of divided by total number of uh, individuals your total number of uh, individuals right this is what you have to consider your total number of population this is what you have to consider right but so these are the two attributes then comes the sex ratio males and females so as per ncrt 60 percent of the population are females and 40 percent males then comes the age pyramids okay so before that age pyramids we talk about the age distribution so basically when you talk about the individuals we divide them into pre-reproductive age group those who are not reproducing so they will come under pre-reproductive age group so question can come from this part kindly listen to me carefully then comes the reproductive age group understood and then there will be the post reproductive age group so that is how the age is distributed this is the distribution of the age and now the graphical presentation of it is known as the age pyramid so mcq can come from this part so please listen to me very carefully so graphical representation right what will be there graphical representation so see when your pre reproductive age group is at the base we always keep pre reproductive age group at the base so pre reproductive one then the reproductive one then the post reproductive one so when you have such triangular age pyramid it means the population it is expanding type of right positive growth is there when you have what when you have more pre reproductive age group then uh, in comparison to that less reproductive and then least one is the reproductive age group so such type of triangular pyramid means population is expanding it is showing the positive growth it is showing the positive growth it is triangular then comes the stable one so in the stable one we consider pre-reproductive and right pre-reproductive and reproductive are almost almost same so here what will we see we will see zero growth 
okay population increase is not there it is a zero then comes the declining in declining you have less pre reproductive age group more reproductive and then post reproductive so this is something from where the question can come expanding means triangular okay and the positive growth is there right positive growth is there this is stable so here the growth is zero and it is bell shaped understood it is bell shaped and here in declining the pre reproductive age group is less then reproductive age group is more and then here this is the post reproductive age group so here the population is showing negative growth okay it is not increasing it is declining it is not increasing that's what we have to remember so when you talk about the evolutionary changes bachche right so when you talk about the population it is something very important because whenever you talk about the evolutionary changes like natural selection it will be at the level of population if i'm talking about any uh, evolutionary phenomena if i'm saying that single individual is evolving it is not going to help right it means that single individual is having that particular mutation that is making it different from all others so when i'm saying the population when that all that evolutionary change when that natural selection when it is at population level obviously then it will pass to the next generation then obviously with the time when they all that changes will accumulate accumulate we will get a new species so this is what you have to remember evolutionary changes through natural selection takes place at the population level that's why population genetics very important it is clear so now next thing is the population growth as i said population for any species is not a static parameter static means something which will remain same no it is not like that for any species okay one example i would like to quote here like if you are talking about the forest in a forest if you are saying the animals living in a forest they are making the population of that forest no you have to be specific the population of lions right the population of tigers the population of chakal like this okay okay so you cannot say that let's say if you are talking about the area where i'm living i'm not the only species living here we have the dogs the cats the mouse and others are also there so be very specific about it okay right so population for any species it is not at all a static parameter first thing food availability right of resources availability predation pressure weather conditions they all are these are the factors which will affect the population so all that lines are from ncert they are for your quick revision then when it comes to the population density or population size it is denoted by n okay when it comes to the population density and population size it is denoted by n right so in a given habitat during a given period it fluctuates due to changes in four basic processes and that is bachche natality immigration mortality emigration so natality n new birth then obviously mortality will be the death immigration i in 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 e exit exit so of course natality and immigration they are basically increasing the population size the n and these two are decreasing it right bachche right 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 so let me tell you about this so here you people can see okay here you people can see if n is the population density at time t then its density at time t point 1 see n at t point 1 will be n t plus what is contributing in population size what is increasing population size two factors new birth and the immigration that's why here you have the plus because they are increasing population density and when it is the mortality when it is the emigration there will be minus there will be minus clear bachche what will be there minus because this is decline so obviously when you have to calculate the population at t plus 1 it will be nt or n1 right then you have to consider birth plus immigration minus death plus immigration that is what you have to consider and then we can answer it okay then we can answer it is that clear students is that clear so this is very important mcq can come from this part and when we talk about the population size it is not always the number that we consider no doubt number is something very good this is siberian cranes they can even be less than 10 chlamydomonas that can be in millions in a lake so we go for the biomass also like your parthenium uh, like your parthenium carrot grass grass carrot grass example plus bunion tree ka example we consider the biomass there plus we also go for other things also jaise sometimes uh, you know we do not go for that absolute we compare the relative relative number also jaise suppose in a lake right if we have to calculate the number of fishes obviously we'll put a trap the fishes will be uh, caught accordingly we will judge like in the case of tigers right so they are uh, 
pug marks and fecal palates they are used to they are used to check the number they are basically their population size so there are different different ways like in the case of bacteria we go for the number volume there are different different things right so i'm just giving you the overview there now let's talk about the growth so when you talk about the population growth you know that we have two growth models one is the exponential one which is also known as j shaped growth model it is i won't say it is realistic why why i'm not going to say that it is realistic why it is not realistic very simple thing as per this model food and space it is unlimited okay food and space is unlimited and organisms they are just reproducing 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 at their maximum potential so one thing that you need to know is that r is equals to b minus d b your birth rate d death rate understood and r is the intrinsic or biotic potential also or intrinsic rate of natural increase okay intrinsic rate of natural increase so this can be directly this can be asked as a question in the neat paper it is the intrinsic rate of natural increase or the biotic potential so birth rate minus death rate that's how we can calculate it this is what you need to keep in your mind okay so so when obviously resources are unlimited everything is available to the organism food and space is unlimited that organism will reproduce will reproduce will reproduce and will keep on rising okay so only death will be there obviously because their lifespan will be completed the new birth that will that is equals to uh, r is equals to b minus d right but right so population will grow exponentially so you can see this you can see this and dn over dt means change in the population size in time t at time t so it will be r that's what you have to remember and next is nt is equals to n naught ert so if you will check the mcqs even in need 2021 so this has been asked what is this e it is base of natural logarithm what is this r intrinsic rate of natural increase what is this n naught population density at time zero what is this t population density at time t okay so here they are showing this exponential plot okay so when you look at these growth models you need to be very clear that x axis is showing the time okay and this side the y axis is showing the population density it is showing the time it is showing the population density that's what you need to consider clear bache now when you talk about the other growth growth model that is your warhulst per log per wait let me write it warhulst per logistic growth model okay logistic growth model okay so it is the s shaped growth model it is the sigmoid growth model so here what do we consider one thing is same right this axis is telling us about the time this axis is telling us about the n the population size okay so initially what is going to happen like let's say if a population is growing at a place initially there will be the lag phase when they need to acclimatize there when they need to you know start dividing then comes the log phase log phase means exponential phase when the growth is too much okay and then comes the then comes the stationary phase then comes what then comes the stationary phase and let me tell you students here what do we consider the k the carrying capacity so now let me explain you what is this carrying capacity carrying capacity is actually the capacity of a place like let's say if you're talking about a place that can accommodate 100 people they are having the place for 100 people the resources for 100 people that is the carrying capacity okay if slowly slowly the number of individuals will increase obviously initially it will be fine right when number is 40 50 60 then competition will start competition will start right but and obviously then there will be a struggle for the survival there will be a struggle there will be the struggle for the resources so this is what you have to remember that when it is the s-shaped growth curve the sigmoid growth curve right so carrying capacity will also be considered here you are not saying that we have unlimited supply right no it is not unlimited there will be a limited food limited space there will be a competition all that factors will be applicable so here when carrying capacity and the population size it's same we call it as asymptot that is another mcq right that is another mcu when k is equals to n it is asymptot so it means there will be no further increase in the population if number of individuals are taking birth the, uh, the others are also dying so it is going to be same the stationary phase that's what you have to remember so in this phase the environmental resistance is also there and that is k minus n over k what we have to consider the environmental resistance and that will be 
k minus n over k that's what you have to consider clear this is the verhulls per logistic growth curve model s shaped growth curve model so you can see this dn over dt is equals to rn multiply k minus n over k clear bache clear bache right so this is for the sigmoid growth so natural sources are limited here competition will be there for this logistic growth right bache then fittest will survive they will reproduce so lag phase log phase firstly lag then log which is also known as acceleration then declaration and finally asymptote will be there asymptote means k is equals to n so this is realistic bache right so asymptote should be very clear to you right now when it comes to the life history variation you know it very well ki population evolved to maximize their reproductive fitness as per the darwinian fitness the population is evolving to have high r value okay this is the line for your paper understood in the habitat in which they live they evolve towards the most effective reproductive strategy their reproductive strategies should be effective so see there are organism which breed only once in their lifetime pacific salmon fish bamboo some produce large number of small sized offspring oysters right the fishes breed many times during lifetime birds and mammals some produce only small number of large sized organism birds and mammals so the examples should be very clear to you right next is the interaction so obviously if we are living obviously we will interact right one species sometimes it is getting benefit from other sometimes not like even plants those who are making their own food they are also dependent on animals because animals will transfer their energy the herbivores will transfer their energy to the next trophic level right so you know about this thing right bachche so population interaction is there the very first thing is predation in a very simple way i'm going to explain it so in predation the one will be benefited another will be another will be harmed so when it is plus benefited minus means that species will be harmed it is detriment detrimental and zero means neutral no effect is there clear bache right neither benefit nor harm nor harm so maintain so predation is very important that predator prey relationship in nature is very important if let's say if a species is growing if they do not have the predator so obviously that related species they will have competition because they are fighting for same resource they will destroy each other so it is very important to have a predator but predator should not over exploit as well right so predator needs to be prudent okay predator needs to be prudent that's what we need to remember okay students so it maintains species diversity by using competition among prey so camouflage monarch butterfly thorns these are the examples okay that is how you know the prey is they are protecting themselves camouflage the cryptic the no, cryptic appearance blending with the surrounding monarch butterfly example is there right they form some chemicals for their defense so that their predator cannot damage them and thorns for cactus and acacia because plants they cannot move here and there right so just to protect themselves from the grazers they are having thorns some are having chemicals as well so examples are important plus these signs are important just say many plants they produce and store chemicals that make herbivore sick and they are not eaten like callotropis callotropis produces cardiac glycosides glycosides so these are the direct mcqs next competition where both are harm negative negative interaction so here we talk about the competition competitive exclusion principle resource partitioning and even we discuss what competitive release jaise it is said bache the distribution dekho one thing is very simple if two species first it was believed that two related species when they will fight for the same resource they will have competition the superior one will survive the inferior one will die this is the one scenario second is it is also observed that two unrelated species they can also fight for same resource right jaise let's say flamingos they are visiting a area and the fish is living there they both are fighting for the zooplankton they are unrelated but they want the same resource this is another example sometimes what happen bachche like let's say in a field there are two grazers one is having better speed than the another one so obviously that one is also affecting the another one right there are different different ways so when it is the competitive release the distributional range increases dramatically when the superior species is removed very simple example let's say you are having an area here one species a is living and here in this maximum area species b is living b is superior okay b is not harming a a is uh, somewhere you know uh, somewhere cornered because of the presence of b let's say if i will remove the b from this area now a is having no check 
right just say we are in our homes right our mother is not there and we are me and my let's say if me and my sibling is having a fight we are not going to stop because we don't have any check so here also the story is same students so see one species which is you know somewhere cornered when this superior species it is removed so it will expand so distributional range increases dramatically when superior species is removed so example is balanus and cathamelus so i have just picked up the important points important example for your quick revision if you want to see it in detail obviously one shots are also available so make sure you check it then gauss competitive exclusion principle as per that this condition is mandatory okay if resources are limited what is the word here if resources are limited then if there is a competition in between two species so the superior one is going to replace the inferior one if resources are limited that is the competitive exclusion principle having done tortoise and the goat in the galapagos island is the example but in nature we don't always see this we see that organisms they they came to a settlement for an example you are living with your sibling you don't like that species you want to throw that species out but you cannot because you have to live with them right otherwise your parents will throw you out so what will you do you'll be like okay fine let's divide okay from 12 to 2 i will watch this tv show then remote will be mine and for 4 to 6 you have to do this okay i'll bring the maggi you'll cook it i'll wash the utensils so basically somewhere the resource partitioning is there right so that two species they are surviving they are just changing their habits isn't it isn't it so five closely related species of babblers this is the example next parasitism obviously parasite is getting the benefit host will not just say lice they are getting benefit they are harming us endoparasites like your tape worm and amoeba we have multiple example other ectoparasites are also there there's a human liver fluke which is a platyhelminth depends on snail and fish to complete their life cycle so parasite they reduce their survival growth and the reproduction of host make them weak so basically they are just telling you about the parasitism so endoparasite they'll develop hooks suckers right so that they can just attach to the cells right they don't have the digestive system developed their reproductive systems are well developed so that you know they can produce more and more cells then brood parasitism best example is your cuckoo coil so coil will lay egg in the nest of the crow but they will look like the eggs of the crow so crow will keep incubating it right so uh, this is a very famous example given in the movie three idiots as well one of the good movies i can say then but check commensalism where one is getting benefited another is having no impact like an orchid which is growing on a mango tree orchid is an epiphyte so orchid is using mango branch as a surface where it is growing but it is not a damaging mango so commensalism then cattle aggregates and grazing cattle grazing cattle with that cattle aggregates will move with that grazing cattle why because when that cattle they are grazing the insects are coming out cattle aggregates will eat them another so they are grazing cattle they are not getting harm they have no impact they are getting benefited okay so when it is the commensalism one species is harmed another is unaffected so that will be one zero commensalism okay it is immensalism then mutualism both are getting benefited lichens symbiotic association of algae and fungi mycorrhiza right roots of higher plant and fungal hyphae they show the symbiotic relationship plant animal relationship for pollination like you remember fig and that flies flies will lay egg within it and when flies will move from one fig to another the pollination will occur so uh, coevolution is also there coevolution is also there in the host and the parasite also right bachche right bachche so this is all about these examples so in the comment section i want you people to give me the example of homensalism and if any there if there is any other example in ncrt you need to mention that in the comment section so i hope you are enjoying it take care make sure you like our channel make sure you subscribe to this so you can see the amazing videos here in the video column so you have time to time we teachers we you know keep updating you we motivate you we are taking marathons as well so we just need your love right so subscribe to our channel and do let me know you like the video or not thank you so much everyone